I was lecturing just a couple of days ago to the Crown Estate. That's the, uh, the body which cares for all the property portfolio of the royal family in the UK. And uh, that can range from uh, properties like uh, Regent Street or Regent's Park, or uh, it can range to the royal palaces or shopping malls or, or entire villages that uh, have been built or owned or planned uh, as part of the commitment of the Crown Estate to preserve a property portfolio for future generations. And one of the really interesting questions is this. What is the future of cities? Why do people like cities? You see, there are many futurists in the world, but not me, who predicted for years the decline of cities. They said that people hate cities. They're busy, noisy, polluting. People want to move out of cities. They predicted the growth of suburbia, and the growth of teleworking, and how everyone will want to live in the countryside or by the sea. Well, that's turned out not to be true, exactly as I predicted it would turn out not to be true. And why is that? Well, I'll tell you why. While teleworking may be very popular, the fact is that people also like to be together. They like to breathe the same air, to live in community, to know who they're working with. And that is why cities have been popular. Cities are popular because they're magnets for talent, they're magnets for, uh, for specialist interests, for niche shops, for extraordinary choice, for entertainment, uh, for the best restaurants in the country. Uh, cities are places where you get often better infrastructure in terms of transport. Often there's more wealth, there's better schools, uh, better universities, uh, uh, more opportunities for people to entrepreneur new businesses. Uh, cities are often uh, places where migrants will arrive for the first time because they'll find pockets of people who speak the same language, same cultures, same shops, same businesses that they recognize from their own home. So cities are great cultural melting pots. They are the places where innovation is often uh, developed, where ideas merge and fuse. Uh, there's a buzz and a pace about city life. Um, so what happened to the prediction? Well, Cities around the world are growing. Over the, over the next decade, you can expect to see at least 200 million people to move towards cities in China alone. You, you'll see probably another 375 million move towards cities in Africa. Uh, we're seeing people uh, move towards cities in the UK. Uh, London's population is growing, for example. Uh, will grow by one to two million over the next decade or so. Uh, you've seen... Uh, uh, their uh, population density increase, higher rise uh, blocks, we're seeing an extra premium on development land. It's not in the case of London that the, the, uh, the outer edge of the city is being massively expanded. It's that the, the concentration of people inside the city is continuing to grow. Uh, and at the same time we're seeing, yes of course, the number of people teleworking has increased. In fact, we all telework these days because, of course, we all work virtually. We work on cars, on trains, and we work uh, at home, uh, we work on the beach. Um, home is work, work is home, and all of the rest of it, yes. And officially, people may be teleworking, so they are uh, to the point where they don't actually have to physically commute one day a week or two days a week. But most people are still working in offices, You've got high technology companies like Yahoo who have banned people working at home during normal office hours because they want people to breathe the same air. They want the buzz of the city in the buzz of the office, in the buzz of your innovation team. They want all of these things going on. And you say, yeah, but what about globalization? Yes, it's true that for globalized companies, they may find that most of their most important working relationships are outside their physical office. So you might say, well, they might as well be at home then and just do video calls. But the fact is that there is still an advantage we find in people meeting physically together. And that's why conferencing is so popular, why corporate events continue to be a boom time industry. People gathering different forums, seminars, meetings, workshops, communities, ideas, think tanks, whatever it is, it's the blend of people experiencing the same moment of revelation together an idea being formed, uh, a team beginning to uh, find its way forward, a, a new initiative being processed, problems being dealt with, uh, new consumer insights being shared, whatever it is, uh, city, community, team, belonging, gatherings are absolutely vital part of our future. And that means that planners are going to need to pay ever closer attention to uh, denser infrastructure, 
faster trains, longer trains, uh, better buses, uh, more synchronized signaling, uh, uh, more uh, dynamic and uh, flexible meeting environments so that people can continue to commute, to be densely packed together in small spaces where they can do what they need to do, have fun, and then, yes, okay, they'll move out to the outer parts of the city, but most of them will not commute very far. Uh, they will, uh, uh, up to 45 minutes maybe at the most, will still be the time that most people will be willing to commute to their place of work. And uh, yes, they will be telework at home for some of that time as well.